In the previous episode of this series dedicated to the F-35, we have discussed the way the aircraft manages tracks and sensors and how it fuses all this information. But there is still a missing point. That is how information is exchanged and integrated with other aircraft. In fact, the data received through the dedicated model data link is treated by the F-35 as if it was the output of just another sensor. And this feature has a name, Cooperative Sensing. Raw material of the F-35 information fusion system are the trucks. A truck is a record containing various information about a potential detection from a sensor. We talked a lot about trucks in this series. The other videos covering them will be linked at the end of this video. So every sensor records its own type of information and the system fuses them into a single record for each truck. This is not a trivial task, not at all, and in fact there is a truck life cycle. A truck may be a candidate, it, there may be a hard truck declaration, the information may or may not be correlated and so on. The Madel data link has been designed to support the full extent of data exchange among the aircraft. The amount of information that is exchanged by the F-25 is quite large and the bandwidth is dimensioned accordingly. Like all modern data links, the model works with the messages. Where a message is a package of information broadcasted by one ship and received by the others. There are several different types of messages, some are just system messages, uh, synchronization and coordination messages, but they may also contain text, images, instruments logs, uh, maintenance records, and so on. The actual structure of these messages is not in the public domain. That's the same for many other data links. But what we know is that the track information is split in three different message types. So the model basic surveillance track provides the independent kinematic state as an estimate and the track covariance at the time of the last measurement update. It is important to note that the kinematic state for a track that has been broadcasted on this type of message could be either ranged or angle only. Keep this in mind for later. Why did I say independent? Because it is important for the stability of the algorithm that does the fusion that the information exchange does not contain information that has been previously received by another aircraft and then transmitted back. If this happens, the estimates about the track information like speed, altitude, position and so on may become very wrong very quickly. It is a case of unwanted feedback. So you may say that all the F-35 in a flight actually receive information from the other aircraft and then basically they draw their own conclusions independently. And hopefully they will be all the same. The model surveillance track also includes the list of the sensors that have contributed to the information that has been included, as well as some track identification summary data. And since the surveillance tracks contain just summary, then there is an entire new type of message, the XID message. The XID message contains a higher fidelity ambiguity list, for example, those derived from the IFF function, in addition to the actual measurement data and the sensor bias. In this way, each aircraft is aware of the accuracy of the identification of that specific track and the possible alternatives. And as I said before, the aircraft will draw its own conclusions. And since the XID contains just the ambiguity list, that is a pre-cooked list of what that specific track could be, there is another type of message for the actual measurement. In fact, the RF parametric message contains the electronic signal measurement data correlated with the track. So each aircraft receives each other's aircraft measurement of the electronic signature of every specific track. 
why did they choose this structure that separates in three different types of messages the information that in the end of the day is all referring to the same track? Well, we don't know. But I can imagine that is related to the raw quantity of data. In fact, classic data links like, for example, the link 16, mostly exchange data, is basically a long string of text. And there's not much else in terms of information about the track. Uh, obviously, this is a generalization. There are several different types of data links, several different levels of sophistication. So, well, just bear with me. XID and the RF parametric messages, though, should be quite a large chunk of information just because of the nature of the data being exchanged. For example, the electronic signature data, they need to digitally represent the received waveforms in the electromagnetic spectrum. So, I would expect that while the basic surveillance messages are exchanged basically every second, which is the frequency at which the sensor fusion loop is happening, the other messages being larger, they're probably exchanged with a lower frequency, saving some bandwidth. This is speculation, but I think is reasonable. I'm pretty sure that those of you who have some familiarity with this kind of issues will be already thinking that, wait a minute, if the aircraft is exchanging that many data, then we can easily triangulate the position and the exact position of a track. And yes, that's exactly what is happening, but not in the way you're thinking. Obviously, this mechanism is useful when the track doesn't have a range associated, and this is more common than you may think, because every passive track pretty much doesn't have a range. So when the system receives an angle on the track, it compares the received track with its own tracks. And obviously there may be several intersections, and the fusion system must work out which is which. In fact, in some cases, this process may generate false tracks that are colloquially called ghosts. No system is 100% reliable. Actually, you may expect that the process is not straightforward at all, because A, every measurement has an error, B, the aircraft and the track are moving. As Otis mentioned before, the F-35 uses a covariance matrix to assess the error. This is a general F-35 design principle. All errors are assessed through the calculation of the covariance. But in this specific case, the aircraft must rotate the covariance matrix to be compatible with its own matrix and then work out the error from there. And this obviously means that the receiving aircraft must have the transmitting aircraft position and spatial orientation among the data. Where are these? Well, the transmitting aircraft sends its own kinematic state through the model to the other aircraft. At the end of the day, every aircraft in the group is actually a track in each one of all the other aircraft participating to the same group. Okay, now it's all good. At this point, it's just basic trigonometry, right? No, wrong. Because the data that the aircraft may have received may have been measured some time ago before being processed by the system. For this reason, the algorithm includes TDOA capabilities for precision location. When an F-35 connects to a model network, the autonomous sensor manager that we have described in one of the previous videos also has the task of synchronizing the clock, so to speak. It is possible to send the exact time and place where the data were received by the transmitting aircraft. So the fusion algorithm pairs its own track with the track received by another aircraft, and after that it calculates an isochron curve. That is a curve where the TDOA is the same, which technically happened to be an hyperbole, and the position of the track is determined by the intersection of these two hyperboli. 
The fact that there is this time delay makes the straight lines that you would use in trigonometry uh, not adequate for the task. The paper that I have read seems to suggest that there is a master clock aircraft that distributes the clock to the other aircraft, but I'm not sure. I guess the clock could be synchronized by GPS as well. Probably you still need a mechanism contained into the model itself for redundancy, if any. We have come a long way in this series in explaining how the F-35 sensor fusion is working. It is an ingenious mechanism, a really interesting technology that is a very important asset in itself. Just this capability has really revolutionized the way air combat is approached today. This is not exclusive to the F-35, several other aircraft have some degree of this kind of integration some degree of sensor fusion. So the air coma that we're going to see today has relatively little in common with what we used to see just 20 years ago. So this technology now is dominating modern air combat, but there will be a time when even this will pass and something else will take its place. The human quest for destroying each other never stops. If you got this far in the video, thank you so much. And a big, big thank you to all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon or by becoming a member. There is also another way to support the channel, which is by buying a model from Air Models. There is an affiliate link below. I will get a small percentage and there will be no extra cost for you. <laughs> and before ending, I just want to say that there never was a Special Forces Commando breaking into my house. What? What? Hey! What? What is it? It never happened. It was just a theatrical expedient. Like when I mentioned the yes! <laughs> Oh, God. Thank you for watching.